Hello everyone. In this episode I will finish the build of the 909 hand clap module. I will use my hot plate for reflow soldering and I plan to use a solder paste stencil to apply the solder paste. Okay, but first of all, let's jump straight into the schematic diagram and have a look at the design. So if we start at the left side here, we have the velocity and trigger inputs. And we also have a push button on the front panel that is connected to the trigger input. And the circuit we see here is basically the same for every TR909 voice. Next we have the envelope generator that generates the envelope for the OTA base, the VCA path. And that is connected to a voltage to current converter and a current mirror that uh, provides the control voltage for the OTA. And as you can see I'm using an LM13700 here uh, and I'm only using one of the devices in the IC. So the other one is unconnected and I'm not using the Darlington uh, drivers either. Uh, I have added or modified the VCA trim pot here a little bit. Since I have it on the front panel I wanted it to be a little bit more usable so I have adjusted the values a little bit here. Okay so if we continue with the audio path uh, it starts with a raw noise from the noise module which is a separate PCB and that is routed through an amount potentiometer that is connected to a bandpass filter where you have the ability to change the frequency of the bandpass filter a little bit with, uh, with this pot. Then the noise source from the bandpass filter is split into two uh, paths. One path is the OTA based VCA here and there is a separate noise amount pot for that as well. And second we have the transistor based VCA which is this path here. And it has an envelope generator that is connected to the trigger input of course. Finally we have uh, the two uh, audio parts are joined or mixed together here in this summing node. And we have an output buffer with a little bit of gain to uh, meet the euro rack levels. After that I completed both the PCB design of the main PCB and the front panel PCB. I decided to go for an 8 HP sized module since all the knobs and the buttons need some space on the front panel. For this prototype PCB order I decided to order a stencil as well. So when the parcel showed up I was really curious about what the result would be and how difficult it would be to apply the solder paste. To successfully apply the solder paste I would need some kind of fixture where I can secure the position and the height of the stencil. I don't want it to move around while I'm applying the paste and it needs to be flush to the PCB as well. Since I had a couple of spare PCBs laying around from other projects, it was very easy to make a fixture out of that and some tape. Just make sure that you use PCBs with the same thickness as the PCB that you are going to apply solder paste to. The stencil is made out of a thin sheet of stainless steel, so be careful that you don't bend it. Align it so it covers the pads completely and secure it to the fixture with some tape. Squeeze out some solder paste onto the side of the stencil and use a plastic card as a spatula to smear the paste over the cavities so all of them are filled. Now you can remove the PCB and place another one in the fixture and repeat the procedure. After that I can place the components one by one and if you look at the PCB under the microscope you see that the stencil does a great job of dispensing the paste and keeping it within the pads. The placement of the components takes some time and I carefully tick each component on the interactive bomb as I place them on the PCB. But compared to hand soldering the PCB this method feels much much more efficient and quicker. I can probably assemble two or three boards in the same time as it took for me for one board using the hand soldering method. And this time I double checked that I didn't place any component upside down. Okay, so after placing all the components it's time to heat up the solder plate. And I will use the same method as in my previous video. First I carefully place the PCB onto the hot plate at room temperature. Then I heat up the hot plate to 190 degrees Celsius and I keep it like that until the solder has melted and I see that the flux has cooked off. Mm -hmm. 
After that, I turn off the heat and let the hot plate cool down. And the result is perfect. No cleanup of solder bridges needed. All components align perfectly. And I don't even need to clean the PCB with alcohol afterwards. I could probably have reflow soldered both boards at the same time, but I did them one by one. However, during assembly I noticed a small mistake that I have made on a silk print. So let's fix that. I swapped the reference designators for two capacitors. They have the same value so it doesn't really matter, but I'd like to fix it anyway. Alright, so the next step is to assemble the module by mounting all the through hole components. I mount the power header connector, electrolytic bulk capacitors and the connector for the noise board on the component side of the PCB. Speaking of the noise board, I have a couple of these already that I ordered when I was building the 909 snare module. I only need to add a couple of single row header pins to the module. Next I place the jack spots and the push button on the top side. I'm using the PCB panel to keep everything in place while soldering. Now we are ready to test the module, but before we plug it in, let's just check the power consumption. Everything seems okay, so let's plug it into the case. So, that's another 909 module finished, and now we only have two types of voices left, the cymbals and the toms. And with this, I want to thank you for watching, and I see you soon again. Goodbye. <laughs>